Hi everybody, just a quick little disclaimer thing. This is not only my first co-op review, which I am really excited about, but this is also the first video that I've actually been having a script for. And so for this video, it's going to be less me talking about the thing and being excited about it or whatever, and more me just talking off of the script. And so uh, I just thought I would just tell you that before I uh, actually got into the video. So we're going to see what I have to say on this subject and uh, let's go. Some sort of introduction to the guests in the video that is comedic and will probably suck anyway. Looking up my script because I didn't come prepared. <laughs> Bennett, are you ready for this review? I actually don't have a phone, but yes. It's already started. Hey everyone. My brother got this game for Christmas in 2009, and I stole it from him, beat him to a pulp, and then beat the game twice. When I was younger, I remember playing the second and third games with my brother. He was always into trying new things, I always wanted to play the same old stuff that we already had. But, um, I remember those being pretty good, yeah. It was the first real video game game that I had ever played, not counting Midtown Madness, which I played a little bit. And so, yeah, I kind of wins me over just in terms of whether or not it's good. I, I haven't played the first game yet. That's that's what I'm supposed to be putting in this room. That's why you keep your script on hand. Something about me loving the intro level and how my gaming nostalgia started with it. Everything about this level is great. The atmosphere, the art design, the level design, the tutorial in this game is fantastic. Yeah, I will say the intro level is rather well done. It reminds me of how the second game started off at least. This is my favorite part by the way. I love this story. It's so simple and yet so awesome. Brief summary of the story or in-depth synopsis? Well, Bennett, our script ain't got none of that in it yet, so, uh... <clears throat> oh wait, what am I talking about? It was, it, it was simple, I can, I can remember this. So the basic story of the game is as such. You are Sly Cooper. You are the latest in the long line of master thieves. Each thief in his family lineup passed down this book, The Thievius Raccoonus, that had their own tips and tricks for thievery. You were supposed to inherit the book, but on the night that you were supposed to do so, the, there were five evil people that came to your house and killed your dad and took the book and split it up into five pieces and then went across the world to do dastardly crimes. Except that they just went there and just sat there waiting for you to get them. Because then we wouldn't have a plot, would we? Actually, we'd have a much better plot, but who cares? This one's still good. Especially for a kid's platforming game, which would you prefer, this or Banjo-Kazooie? Dumped at the Happy Camper Orphanage. <laughs> you meet up with Donatello, who is a ninja turtle and the smart one. They become lifelong friends after stealing cookies and they decide to team up with Sly. And when he's 18, they decide to team up and take back the Thievius Raccoonus from the Fiendish Five. This little book I've been holding up is actually the instruction manual to the game, made to look like the Thievius Raccoonus. And it's neat because a bunch of the instructions in the book are actually like paper clipped together, or they look like it anyway. And I just thought it was rather interesting. Also, it's not even just an instruction manual. The characters, as told by their colors, are actually the ones reading it off to you. And that's pretty neat too. In the game, you play a Sly Cooper for most of the time. These are easily the best part of the game, as long as there's no vehicle involved. I thought that it was the most awesome platforming I'd ever seen, and to be frank, coming back to it now, I still think it really holds up. I think it's really good. So, most of the game plays as I remember it, but the camera seemed really backwards to me, and it took me a few levels to get... 
Yeah, it was the first real game that I ever played, so I didn't really have any issue with it, but coming back to it, yeah, I was really backwards. I had to realize that the camera was moving on a sphere around the character, and the right analog stick moved the camera itself rather than the view angle. This is a diagram. It's a dark. Get it? Got it. Good. And there aren't any options to change it either, so I hope you like it. It's surprising how different they made all of the hub worlds feel, despite them all being almost exactly the same thing. Props to the visuals, my friend. The hub worlds would be expanded upon greatly in the sequels, but I appreciate what they did here. It's a more involved kind of hub world, like the Spyro games, instead of just being a room where you go into levels like Crash Bandicoot. The sections where you're on a vehicle as Sly, though, are just frustrating because they're basically an on-rail shooter, but you have more direction as to where you can go, and you can go forwards and backwards and stuff, but... backwards. But the controls aren't too good, and I just didn't really like them. And the annoying enemies with walls in front of them that you just have to shoot over and over. I will say one thing I had a problem with here that gets resolved in the sequels is health. You see, in this game, you just get one hit, and then you're done. You can pick up some lucky charms so that way you can take more hits, but you don't have a health bar, which you do in the sequels, and I appreciated that change. When you get hit and you don't have any lucky charms, you go back to your last checkpoint. Checkpoints aren't too far apart, so it's not a hassle, but it is a little bit of a pain. And when you lose all of your lives, you get a game over. Game overs are insignificant. I mean, look at this. It's just a text box. It doesn't have any presence. It doesn't do anything. It's just game over. Yes, no. And another thing is, they don't punish you for game overs either. Every time you get a game over, you go back to the beginning of the level that you started at, but you still have all the clues that you picked up. It kind of makes me wonder why they went with a live system to begin with. Okay, I'm just gonna be frank here. I hate Mary's segments in this game. I think they're absolutely terrible. He's got two different types of gameplay modes. In the first mode, you're sly, and you're in a turret, and you have to shoot any threats that come at Murray, taking care to not hit Murray himself, or any threats that might hurt Murray. Completely understand. I disagree because I think that these sections can be absurdly entertaining. Check out this girl's reaction when she finds out she can hit Murray. Oh! I can hit him. Murray, I killed him. The other Murray sections are driving sections, and in those you have to race against four computer cars in order to get one of the keys that you need to advance forward in the game. I wouldn't have a problem with these, except for the driving controls are awful. In this game, you move forward with the analog stick, and turn with the analog stick. The only thing the face buttons are used for is using your nitro. WHY?! Also understand on this, and also disagree because they are entertaining. Just watch, just watch this. Except for the last one, that was terrible. I thought it was really cool. The ending to the game was cool. And there's and there's an anime too. There's there's anime at the end of it for some reason. I like anime. <laughs> Awesome out of 10.